Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we're going to be creating a calculator. Sort of. We're not really going to be creating a calculator. I tried actually doing that, but it was actually pretty extensive. You, you have to do quite a bit in order to get a calculator, a basic calculator functioning. It wasn't difficult. It was just time consuming. And I think that was distracting me from the ultimate goal of learning how to program. So you would think that it would help you. And in ways it does, but I just kind of lost interest in it. So in these videos, I really more focus on the concepts of things and how to do certain things rather than doing examples. And for that, I do apologize because I know using examples and doing examples is very important. But that's why I typically recommend like Project Jeweler or, or some ways to get some extra examples to practice with because that's the best way to learn. But because in this video, I focus more on the um, actual concepts. I want to go over this because there is something to be learning learned from it. Now, we will create a calculator. So we'll put all of the elements, input elements right here. They're all going to be buttons. Here are the IDs. And I think I mentioned before, never start an ID with a number. So we, we're going to just use the words themselves. The values are perfectly fine, of course. And it's going to look like this. So just numbers across the board, plus and an equal sign. In the logical part, for every button, we're going to have a query selector, right? And we're going to use the ID for each one. And for each one, we're going to have to have an event listener. Because if we don't, when we click on it, how are you going to acknowledge it, right? One dot on click dot listen. And then we're going to have the first number. So when I first click on a number, the first number is going to be that. Let's say, for example, the first button I click on is going to be the three. So first number equals three. Then I'm going to click on the plus. Plus is right here. And I click on the plus. And so the second number equals the first number. So the second number will equal three. First number will equal three. And then I hit the seven. And so first number equals seven. So second number equals three. First number equals seven. And then I will click the equal sign right here. Button input element. And therefore, I will print the second number, which is actually the first number I clicked on, right? The first button. Second number is the first button I clicked on, plus the first number, which is actually the second number I clicked on. And then it'll give me my value, right? So what did I say? 3 plus 7 equals. And it's going to be query selector output, which is right underneath the calculator right here. So 3 plus 7 equals 10. And that's what we have our simple calculator do. At the same time, pretty lame, huh? Because you can't even do multiple digits or anything like that. That's kind of lame. So that's all we have. However, the point is here. We have to put all of our elements here. No question about that. But this is kind of a mess, isn't it? It's kind of big for, and you have all of these event listeners. Is there an easier way to do it? Well, of course there is. So first of all, I'm going to comment this all out. And I'm going to go ahead up here. I think I commented, commented too much out. Nope, not enough. There we go. And up here, I'm going to say div element output equals. I just thought of this. I'm going to make this a little bit easier. So we'll just display the information in the div output element. Okay, there's two ways to actually do this. Number one way, we can say, let's create a div. And we'll save this div element down here. And so we will create a div from here on up. Not this, this is a new div right here. From here, this these elements on up, and remember the div goes all the way across, this will be in its own separate div section. So all of these inputs will be in a div. And so we don't have to actually query selector or use an event listener for each and every separate element. We'll just do it as a whole. Div element, cal calculator equals query selector 
calculator. Now, how do we access this? Of course, we need a event listener, right? On click dot listen. Here, we're going to actually need the value here. Okay, so mouse event E. Okay, because I want the information of this click. And what is E? It's a click. That's all it is, right? But in order to get the value, I'm going to say output dot text equals E dot target dot value. So what it's going to do so what it's going to do is actually get E, the target of E, where I'm actually clicking, and the value there. It's giving me a little error here. Get rid of value is not defined. Okay, so to get rid of that, it'll still work. But let's make Adam happy. Adam editor, okay, not a person Adam, okay. Um, as input element. Because you probably remember, so that gets rid of it. You probably remember from previous videos that um, if it doesn't always sufficiently know what this actually is, so it doesn't know what is the type, the the um, editor doesn't exactly know what that type it is. Therefore, you have to specifically define it so that when you put dot value, it will know and it won't give you any more warnings. Okay. So we do this. Let's save it. See if this works. Cross our fingers. Three, two, one. So it now the system knows what I'm actually typing. Okay, so I'm not going to go too much into the rest of the logic of the plus and my equals because that's again not the point of this um, video itself. Just learning. Hey, we don't need to create an input, uh, an event listener for everything. We just simplify it, right? Excellent. But wait a minute. There's a problem. This is part of the div too, right? What if I click out here? Well, what's it actually doing? Let's get some more details. It's actually giving me some errors. So here, it's correct. But if I click out here, it's actually giving me some additional errors. Um, here we go. Here it works. Here it works. Here it does not. OK, how do I get rid of those errors themselves? How do I make sure that the program is valid. Well, I could do one of several things. Um, maybe I'll do uh, maybe I'll do this and I'll say something like a test. Okay, F test function. And the test function will be mouse event E again. So what I'll do is this will equal test. And how do you check for errors, right? Try is one way. Try, and I'll say return e.target.value on error. Just don't return anything, OK? I think that should actually work. Again, the same thing we could put as input element right here. I think we get the point. Um, if you're a purist, go ahead and do it. So whenever I click mouse event E, this output doc text will equal test. And test will say, try this. If it is so, it will return this value. And so therefore, you will, right here, you will put the e.target.value if it's one of those buttons. If there is an error, like here on the outside, there is no value here. OK, these have values. These do not. There is no value there. It won't return anything at all. Cross fingers. That works. That works. That works. That works. That works. Good. So far, how about here? Oh, OK. So that works too. Nothing is being actually triggered because nothing is, is being printed here. You can always say return um, please push up button. You can always do something like that, right? Please push a button. Okay. So that's a possibility as well. 
How is, is there another way of doing it? Well, of course there is. Instead of using a div, you could actually use a name. Okay, so what we could do is name equals calculator. And let's put that on every single one. Hang on. There's got to be an easier way. If anybody knows an easier way how to do that, please let me know, okay? Um, okay, so we have the name equals calculator. So it's kind of like a radio button, right? They have the same name, but there's, they're not in the same div. Well, there is a div, but there's no ID for the div here. And they have different IDs. So how do we do that? How do we access that? So it wouldn't be div element. It would be, there's still button input elements, right? No, actually, I'm sorry. It would be a list because what I'm going to do is a query selector all. And this would be name, what's the proper syntax here? Name equals double quote calculator, double quote calculator, end bracket. I think that's actually correct. There we go. Okay, calculator dot on click. I still think that's okay. Calculator dot on click dot listen mouse and output text equals tar e dot target dot value, right? So what I'm going to say is that when I click on the calculator, any of the ones with that name, listen for it, and then put the output dot text equals e dot target and the value itself. There we go. Okay. So that will also work as well. I'm not sure what, um, how to get rid of this on click, this calculate on click dot listen. Um, it's giving you an error. I'm not sure how to get rid of that quite honestly. Um, but, but this is one way in which you can actually do it. So if you click outside here, see no errors. Um, you're just getting the names, the list of names, that element which, which represents the query selector, all, all of the elements, input, button input elements with the name calculator, which is um, all of them, right? Listen for them, mouse event E, then you're going to print out on the screen E.target, the event, where are you clicking on? the target and the value. And that's another way to actually get the values of the buttons. And again, we made it much simpler than making all of these um, uh, event listeners for each and every single ID. And if you can picture, think of in a web application that has 20, 30, 40 of these, this is a lot easier way of keeping track of all of those input elements. And if you have to add more, subtract more in the future, you can always do it nice and simply, and you don't have to create a brand new query selector for the ID. Okay? Believe it or not, that's all we're doing with the calculator because I think that's the basic concept that I wanted to capture and uh, go over today. Thank you very much.